Welcome to the Work-Life Balance Podcast. I am Kara. And I am Maggie. Together, we're a power real estate team with the Bajetti Partners in Nashville. We believe that the hustle culture of today's driven entrepreneur who lives and works in Middle Tennessee requires balance. Back to work life balance with Kara and Maggie. Welcome back. Welcome back. Today we have been with a special guest all day, and we're so excited to introduce you to him. This is Leif Becker. He is our friend, oh gosh, mentor, author, uh, world record holder for breaking boards. Um, Realtor. 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 <laughs> There's so many other things. things. Major motivator. So thank you for oh showing up and being here for, for us today. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm so You're excited welcome. to be here. I know. We're super excited to have you. A true serial entrepreneur, literally. That's what life needs to be about. Yeah. That's all I have to say. So we've it. spent the whole morning. We had, just to preface what's been going on today, we had an amazing day with him as our motivating speaker with a, a room full of realtors and other people in the industry. And um, it was just so motivating. And I feel like every time I see you speak, you leave with just like this. We feel like we leave with like a fresh breath of air and like good motivation skills and I don't know. Yeah, you know it what's just so funny? Good. I called everybody that listens to our podcast knows who Reed is, but my mm. fiance, I called him after and I was like, I feel so good leaving there. Yeah. Like it just made me feel motivated. I'm about to go on vacation. I'm like, I'm going to come back from vacation hitting the ground running because it just makes you feel so good. And I don't know, you hit home for me on a lot of topics today and it was just great. I appreciate that, you know, because I, you both have just touched into sort of an underlying factor of taking the stage more so than just the content that goes out, but what we're trying to accomplish, which is we live busy lives. Yeah. We live lives, and not only that, but our society is just set up in a way where it, there's a lot going on. I mean, we have to wear a lot of hats every day, and that just happens across the board. I mean, I'm sure with all your listeners as well, you know, we're always trying to accomplish so much, but want to cultivate the opportunity to say, let's just take a moment to slow down and stop. Mm-hmm. Let's take a moment to for self-reflection. You know, and, and if you were in my talk today, we talked about, you know, it all starts with having a balanced life. Um, you can't, oh yeah. my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Work-life balance. Uh-huh. It starts with balance. Literally. Well, let me, let me share this then because this is the perfect topic, work-life balance, okay? What... What is the conduit of balance when you are ambitious? And that, that is self-reflection. And let's say the last two hours of us spending time together and meeting with realtors and all the great people in the industry here in Nashville and Franklin, um, it was the opportunity to say, I just need to take a moment to, 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 to slow that ambition down for a moment and self-reflect a bit to say, how can I, you know, if you know Stephen Covey, let's sharpen the saw. You know what? That's what we did today. Yeah. You know, we slowed down, we self-reflected, and that drives our ambition even further if we give ourselves those opportunities. So, I think that's that, what that's, it was. That's, and it's so true. I, would, I feel like that's the part that we all have a problem doing. That whole saying of being in the rat race, it, there's so much truth to it. You're on a hamster wheel. You're just going. You forget, and then you're like, oh, my God, we talk about we're already in the middle of May. Wait, holy where cow, we're already, like, halfway through. Like, what, where did the time go? Because we're so caught up in the day-in, day-out routine of – Making deals, closing deals, making deals, closing deals. Throwing some family in there, of course, and balancing it with our children and life. But to step right. back and actually, like, really think about what you just accomplished gets lost. Yeah. And that's it. And as a culture, we're conditioned to do that. And then when you have the desire to step in and become a real estate agent, well, let's just take that. Yeah. Let's supersize it, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, let's take it to the next level. Like you just said, Kara, it's like, Gosh, okay, we already lead a busy life, and and anybody, I mean, we all live busy lives, but I will tell you, and being a real estate agent myself, when you become a real, you're taking all that to the next level, and it becomes even more important to then say, when are those self-reflection moments, because that's really going to, that's that's our reset button. Self-reflection is our reset button for life. It is. I love that. Which, and the very first thing that you had us do today, like you were like, take a second, and where's your business going to be? Like, literally a year from now today, I look at Marissa, which is Kara's sister, yes. and I was like, I need more than 90 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> 90 seconds is not enough to sit here and think about where am I going to be in a year? Because that does take a lot of, like, self-reflection. Like, where am I even at? Because we do so much every day, and, like, it's just go, go, go all the time. A lot of times you don't even realize where you are to be able to know where you got to go. And that made me slow down. So I appreciate it. And I wrote a lot of stuff on my board. 
today. It's so, it's so true. And that exercise, and again, listening to what we shared today and our, you know, your listeners right now are going to get to hear all this, but we talked a lot about the importance of having that conversation between your head and your heart. And that first exercise, like we just spoke about was, it was really stating, shut your mind off for a moment and give your heart a moment to express itself. All right, because that's, you know, powerful individuals understand how to do that. Shut your head off, just stop all those thoughts, and give your heart that moment to say, I want to become bliss. That's where it all begins. I've got to work on that, because I, (laughs) this thing does not stop. (laughs) It doesn't. I mean, we're very similar in that, like, we're so driven, like, that you forget that you do need to appreciate the small victories and not just aim for the number, yeah. the next thing, what's the next best thing that's going to happen. And I, mm-hmm. I think we just forget that, and I am 100% at fault of that. <laughs> 100% Same. at fault. Same. But I think yeah. that... Well, we took today. some time today. I we know did. that, and it yes. was great. We definitely did. So how often do you do that? How often do you self-reflect? Are you a daily self-reflector? You, do you wake <laughs> up every morning... You know, Daily wouldn't the perfect yeah. answer be yes? Yeah. yeah. Before I touch yeah. my phone, I, I mean, do. I know we yeah. have people that say that before I touch my phone in the morning, I put my feet and I get grounded and I say my motivation for the day and I reflect on the people actually have these processes. Yeah. Most of the people we've talked to are a lot of really high functioning um, individuals do. It's just implementing them, which is again, so what we here it is. About. Anytime we are, anytime there's something that we need to implement into our life and we're not, um, we need to break that into a half step, okay? okay? So great thing that you just said to me, Kara, you said, do you do it every day? And of course, the perfect answer would be yes, but right now I'll have to say no. Yeah. So what's my half step? Okay. My half step is knowing the importance of making sure that happens. So if I do miss out on making that happen, it sort of sits in me like I should have done that. And that is what motivates me to make sure I do it the next day. Okay. Half steps are key. Half steps are key to moving forward. And even even in what we're talking about right now and, and that reflection moment, um, if you're not doing it every day, um, make sure that every day you remember the importance that it should be done. Yeah. And that will motivate you to make sure that it happens the next day if you miss it today. That's great. That's a great way of thinking of it. Which you said something earlier, too, and I can't remember exactly how you phrased it, and you can probably regurgitate it Uh to me, but (laughs) it was like the things that you are wanting to do on a daily basis that you're not doing, you're not doing because you have not become that person. But when you become that person, those things just start happening naturally because it's who you are rather than like forcing yourself to do something. I don't know if you remember saying that, but it kind of <laughs> stuck with me because it's like, oh, well, oh, I need to go wake up and work out in the morning. It's like, oh, I hate that. But it's like, okay, if you start thinking of yourself as a healthy, you know, mm-hmm. athletic individual, then that's not things that you need to be doing. That's just who you are. I don't know. It, it really resonated true. with me. No, that is so true. And it goes back to what we just said a moment ago. If there's an action that you feel you need to be taking, but you're not, no matter what it is at least take a moment to acknowledge its level of importance that it should be in your life. It almost becomes that half step. And like you said, yes, um, you know, we talk today a lot about big thinking, you know, big thinking, like I look at everybody and even in today's audience that we had, we had so many great people there today. um, I want them to have the opportunity to walk out of what I shared with them and say, this world has so much more to offer than I've ever even realized. And how can I, and then I want to share with them, how can I potentially take it on yeah. and make that happen? I don't want to just say, I don't want to be seen as a motivational speaker. I, because that's sort of like the world's in front of you. Yeah. Just take it and run. No. Yeah. Um, I sort of want to become a consultant. Like, all right, the world's in front of you. You have, you can take on grander things than you have ever thought of, mm-hmm. but let's talk about how that does happen. Mm-hmm. And, and just like you shared a moment ago, there's a lot of the little things that we talked about today of not just do, knowing it's there, but let's talk about how we can bring things into our life to make it happen. Yeah. So. Well, and I think, does that go back to the circle of mastery too that we yeah, talked about today? Mastery, yeah. Which was, I think, and I, I hope we all took pictures of that. I know for sure I did, but I, I was looking everybody, around. Everybody there got my did. ebook and they have my book. Yeah. And it's all in, a, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's who I am. Yeah. It's, well, it's awesome because it's the I can'ts and I won'ts and I ams, right? And, oh, there. that's the, yeah. Picture of it right the here. That's the master That's the master that, yes. Well, you'll have to f- That's the, wait well, till the end you, of the episode to get that back. 
<laughs> but that's the key to success. It is. That's the key to mastery, and that's so cool. It's just, but I think like we talked about before the camera got on, is it's the I won'ts or I can'ts and I ams and all the things that ma- you know matter to create the circle, right? So like for you, being a world record breaker, mm-hmm. that's like beyond impressive. Bow down to that. I think that's very cool. He's going to be doing it again soon. Again, yes. we're going to talk about that. Talk about but, I mean, this, the, what it's, how it started for you and being nervous and then realizing, I've got to do it. Oh, my God, shit, it's happening. <laughs> 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 to, I've got to accomplish this. Like, there's no turning back now. And I think that's powerful that we all get stuck. That, yeah. oh, my God, but what if I fail? Yeah. Well, what if you don't? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like we talk about that. Yeah. And like you said a moment ago, we get stuck. Mm-hmm. What can we do to overcome? I'm going to say it right now. That stuckness. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and at this, and, and again, I learned that a long time ago. You know, I was dreaming about this world record for a long time before it came to fruition. It really shifted in a space when I put a date on the calendar, and we talked a lot about that today in our conference. It was, mm-hmm. and I told every, all the realtors there, put a date on the calendar and make it real. Yeah. Um, and, and even with any, so I've realized any upcoming events I have, I commit to a date, a time and a place and that's it. That's it's, it. it's like pulling the trigger and you can't get anything back. You've pulled the trigger, date, time, place, location, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. It's done. Yeah. It's now happening. You have, you, it's sort of like you stepped away from control of it. Mm-hmm. We talked a lot of, we can say this all day, right? We talked about all, yeah. all the but you know how day. easy it is to say, <laughs> oh, hours. I'll check my calendar and get back to you. And then the next week, oh, I forgot to look at my calendar. Let me look at it and I'll get back to you. So that putting it on, make, making you accountable, which was yes. another conversation. And I love that so much. Yeah. I just did that with all the agents, which mm-hmm. they still owe me their time. <laughs> this one I hold accountable, but the other ones wanted me to. Yeah. But then when it was their day, they were like, oh, can we push it another day? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I like that. Get it on the calendar. This is our meeting time. Yeah. And let's talk about it because, yeah, we just fall short. And that's okay. Life happens. But if you put it on and you schedule it and you can't back out, it changes it, right? Oh, it's so true. And But that also, too, is the differentiator between, you know, the 80-20%. Yeah. You know, it's the 20. What we tried to, a lot of the conversation that was had today was, what is the 20% doing? Mm-hmm. When they make a commitment, they put a time, date, and location on it. They're, they understand the level of commitment they're making. Yeah. There's another whole business perspective we can look at is what's the commitment that you're making? And not just a soft commitment, but a hard commitment, a no turn back commitment. Yeah. And, 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 and what makes it extra special is when you can cultivate a level of commitment that not only are you doing it to, to serve self, but to serve others. Um, and that, that becomes even more than, you know, I don't want to call it a weight on your shoulders. It's not, but it makes it a bigger picture. Yeah. You don't want to so let anybody down because now you're, you don't yeah, let they're down. all you waiting for you. Down, yeah. And you've made the commitment and you've made the commitment for yourself and others. Mm-hmm. So I say this to all business owners, find that opportunity to make a commitment to your business. And as you do cultivate a bigger why, so that commitment becomes not just about who you are, but it also becomes a big part of those around you and the ones that you care about most. And right. when you can make that commitment, like making commitments to your kids or to your spouse or to all those. But we can do that in business as well. Yeah. You know, we can find those avenues, those whys to say, I'm here to, me- maybe we're a mentor. You know, maybe we're helping others and you make that commitment. Hey, I'll be there on this time at this date, this way to make sure that you're successful in what you're doing. Yeah. Um, when we can make it bigger than us, um, it makes us step higher than we yeah. ever had before. Which I think it's so important too. We you talked a lot about today, just having the accountability partner. This is, this is you're looking oh, at her well, for your me. Name is Love it. Your name's on my board too. <laughs> yes, like but yeah. Seriously, like that matters so much because every day when I wake up, like I'm not only thinking about okay, I need to do this for me and my business, but also like she and I share a lot together, right? So it's yeah. having that extra driving force of like, okay, I not only have to do this for me, but I have to do this for her too. You know, and like many different situations, but I think that's so important because that really is what, like you said, gets you up every day and keeps you going and like keeps you having consistency. And I think hard. I want to piggyback off that, but also the why. And that was a big conversation that you had today about the why. Okay, so everybody has to have a why. We don't just sell real estate because 
that's our career and we love it. Mm-hmm. There's a bigger reason why why we do it. And I think that's that's probably a hard question for most people to answer, I would assume, what their bigger picture is because they are living the day in, day out or paycheck to paycheck and they don't have maybe a why they're doing it besides get food on the table and shelter over your head, yeah. right? So I think that was a, for me, that's a reflection too because for me, like my why, I want to be financially free. I don't want, I just want to have freedom to travel. I want to have freedom and time with my kids and my family. That's my why above all, right? But, you know, writing that down, that that's what it is, it's, it takes that reflection that we don't always sit down and think about, and I don't think most people do. I don't know if that's your experience with meeting so many people across the board, if they put a big question mark to that, or have they oh, figured it yeah. out? yeah. Um. I'd love to step into why for a moment. I think the why, the why always lives within us. And our why, our why has always lived within us. Um, I often, and, and let's step into why for a moment. We can go down, we can go so, down so many ways, but let's talk about the why for a moment. I talk about, when I talk about why, talk, we're going to talk about so many different things, but we talk about different forces mm-hmm. in the world. You know, we talk about mechanical forces, electrical forces. So when we talk about our why, I talk about it as a gravitational force. A gravitational force, and if we think about, and, and we're talking bigger picture now, maybe a little philosophical, gravitational force is a weak force. They call it a weak force, but it's a powerful force. And when you connect with your why, it may feel weak, but it's powerful. And if you talk to anybody who has been following their why for a moment, you will hear them talk about how so many things have stepped into their life. Well, what does gravitational force do? It pulls us towards one another. If you can connect to your why, you could connect it to your gravitational force. One that often feels weak because it could take years to transpire, but creates a powerful impact. And there we go. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> what else do you say? Wow. It's so true, though. That's live true. With it, live, allow that gravitational force to live within you. That's your why. And the world will connect to who you are. And who I you're love that to so be. much. And acknowledge it, maybe. Like, listen to it. Yeah. Because maybe we don't hear it. Or maybe we do, but we suppress yeah. it. Yeah. I think we had uh, uh, Lauren. That's exactly what oh, I was about ahead. to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, we've talked to a ton of really successful people. And just like she was saying, high performers and high achievers on a yes. daily basis. And there's been a few that have, like, really stood out to us. And, like, they get shit done. Yeah. And they love what they do. And they're really good at it. And it's really all because they know exactly why they're doing it. Uh-huh. And they're super, super passionate about that. Mm-hmm. Every single one of them. So that's so true. Yeah, she's a she was a she's a news broadcast gal, Lauren, that was on. She's a news press broadcaster for Channel, Channel Four. Flat, 4 here in Nashville. And she came on and that was exactly she turned the script on us and was like Wow. What what is your why? And I was like, yeah. Ooh, I go, I feel she like I did. need to lay down for a therapy session now. <laughs> right here. She did it. I was like, well. Oh my God. So really she actually created a whole podcast on yeah. sitting down and talking to people on their wives. Yeah. And it's so amazing. You should check it out. I'll, I'll share it's it with you. Amstigator. Love it. Yes. Amstigator. And it's so, like, cool because to hear everybody has a different why. Yeah. And and like you said, maybe it could make you feel weak because maybe it's not like this, oh, my gosh, overbearing. Maybe it's just to have time. Maybe but it it's, lives here. It lives in your heart. Yes. Yeah. Which I want to talk about yeah. your why, too, because that's super, super yeah, important. Sure. And oh, you yeah. have, like, all of that to talk about, too. Which that's true. Let's talk about Go ahead. Talk which about way, your why. Which way do we want to go? My why? Yes. Oh, gosh. Talk about your why. My why is to cultivate you know, that ambition for life okay. and to have the opportunity to do so. And if you know me and you heard my talk today, you know, my why becomes um, kids, really. It becomes, you know, it's my passion point, And you mm-hmm. see that in me. And, and before we jump into that, we talked about passion today. You know, we talked about passion. And it's raw energy and how it can you know, flow from one to the other. And when you find you, the direction that you need to take, um, it becomes a powerful opportunity. And for me, it's, it's working with kids. Um, and, and that passion's just become, again, it goes back to our culture, our society being the challenging place that it is. And, and my mission is just, I want kids to have the opportunity to be kids. Mm-hmm. Don't let our society, don't let today's culture take that away. Because we live in a challenging space at this time. 
let kids be kids. And so, yeah, my mission, my passion is allowing them to do that as long as they potentially can before they get sucked into phones, before they get sucked into social media, before they get sucked into all the things that are taking place in this world today that, you know, we didn't ever have to deal with. They had the opportunity to be kids. Why does, why is that so important? It goes back to self-reflection. What happens if we don't give these children the opportunity to self-reflect as they grow? We become mindless. Yeah. We become a part of more than, you know, more than we look to be. Mm-hmm. We want to we truly be able to express the powers that we have. And if that's taken away from us, we don't get that opportunity. Oh, sure. God, they, can't even, they can't even figure out how to self-soothe themselves because they got to have the phone to go to bed at night. I mean, it's like a total cultural change. Definitely no. not what I grew up. I was like, when the dinner bell rang, you came in from your bikes and running on the oh, street. Oh, so true. So you had like all that innocent kid fun. And now it's like. And you were a part of yourself. Yeah. You had the opportunity to explore. Explore. You. Exactly. Explore you. And that's what childhood should be about. It should be about self-exploration. Mm-hmm. Not about how much can I fill my life with. I mean, we yeah. already have that challenge as adults. We don't need to throw that on our kids as they're growing up. It's true. So I assume you fell in love with this passion after you had your first child. <laughs> because you probably didn't pay any attention to it until I, it was in front of your face. You know, so funny. Um, I say I was fortunate enough. I, I started a martial arts school in the late 90s. And I, to be honest, that's where it shifted my mind. The opportunity to work with kids. Because you have these kids running in every day. Mm-hmm. You look at who they are and, and where they're at. And as a martial arts instructor and teacher at that time, I was like, I just want to give them the opti- opti- opportunity to cultivate what I see in them. And, but it's so true because when I then did become a parent, I'm like, I felt so fortunate that I was a teacher for so many years because I think mm-hmm. I spent three years teaching martial arts to finally say I feel comfortable. Yeah. So to throw that on a new parent right away when sure. you become a parent, <laughs> you know, I, I, I felt okay, yeah. Yeah. you know, but it, it was only good. because of the years of teaching and seeing these kids that I said, okay, yeah. I get it. Just be you, you know, and I say that to my daughter all the time. Listen, just be you and do what you do. She's a, so- she's a big time softball player. And I said, you know, that takes us above and beyond anything else. In your mind, every day you should just live it. Just be you and do what you do. And there's nothing else that you need to worry about. I love That's that. It. And she's lucky to have your support like that, yeah. especially because you guys are traveling a lot. She is a oh, yeah, very yeah. good softball player, right? Yeah, she loves so, it. We're on travel teams. You know, we're all over the place. So we love it. Yeah. So she's traveling, you're traveling, wife's traveling. Yes, we're so busy. So then group. you've got the, you're trying to balance it all. <laughs> yeah. So self reflection with all Comes of you. Comes back to that reflective opportunity to say, yeah. well, well, that brings us back. It brings yeah. us back to what's really important. Mm-hmm. Family. You know, it's the opportunity to, to step up and step out and share something, but then to step back and step off and say, I'll never forget who I am which is that's really what the bigger picture needs to be. And I really feel sometimes in our culture that gets flipped. You know, I step up, I step out, I step on stage. That makes me important. So that's who I am. That's not right. You know, it's who you are when you choose to step off. And, 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 and I've always believed that that's, that's who I want people to know who I am. And, and that's who I want to know. You know, I'm glad I love the opportunity to listen to people. But it's when you get off the stage or you get off where you're at, I, that's when I'm going to know who you are. And I won't ever get that mixed up yeah. in a positive way. Yeah. It's who we should be, and that's how we should live our lives. It's true. Well, you have that presence that you don't, you don't have a grandiose, like, oh, my gosh, this guy's on stage and he's so beyond. I can't, he's untouchable. You don't have that presence when you're up there. No. You are so connecting to the audience. And today was a smaller crowd, but I've seen you in a little bit of a larger crowd as well. And you don't have that where you scare as, as your, what are, like, yeah. as your audience at all. Well, I appreciate it. I don't share this story very often, but I appreciate that. And, and that was, I think, one of my first ever ambitions. Um, so I, a little bit of background. I lived in Connecticut for a long, long time. That's where I grew up. And I happened to be in a, in a particular spot in the area where a lot of high-profile New Yorkers lived. Okay. Um, anybody and anybody you would know. If I threw any names out, you would know who they were. Mm-hmm. But I lived within the realm that they lived in where they were in a secluded area and they were just people. They were mowing their lawns. They were taking out the trash. These are people you see in the movies. These are people you, that own companies. And yet they were mowing their lawn, taking out their trash and living a normal life. And at the age, and I was a teenager at that time. And they became my role models, not because what they had accomplished in life, 
but it was always to remind me that they were no different than I was. And, and when I'm on the stage, anybody that's with me, they are no different than I am. Mm -hmm. We're all people. just here together. So that was my ambition. My that. ambition was I want to go out into the world and do awesome things and have a great time and do fun things, but I never want to lose who I am. Mm -hmm. And that needed to come first. So, so important. That, that's, that's, so hard that, that's where I first started the direction of go out, do fun things, make great things, inspire people, but remember who you are and always give back in that way. Yeah, I love that. Of all, it's so important. Being humble. Well, tell us a little bit about your charity that you have because you told us your why, and that kind of goes into that. It all goes back, right? So uh, we've started, we've we've conducted and developed a great opportunity for. Um, it's called the Champions Charity Alliance, and it's the same exact thing. It's really looking for others that are out there, mission-minded individuals that say they understand understand their skill sets and they're giving back, but they also may be missing a few pieces. You know, they may be looking to say, I have X, Y, and Z, but I don't have A, B, C, and how can I develop that? So we've created Champions Charity Alliance to say, we're going to help you fill in the gaps, um, teamwork, you know, masterminds, um, and, and we've really been successful on being able to pull that together. Yeah. So, um, and, then, and then we just ask anybody who wants to be on board with what we're doing, you know, what particular lane do you live in? As for me, and um, I, as we shared, I work with kids. So that's my lane under Champions Charity Alliance. We work with, you know, we have individuals that work with veterans. We have work, individuals that work with single moms. You know, our goal is just to connect those doing great works with those that need the work done. Yeah. Um, so, again, my mission is my mission is kids and, and, and being able to do what I do with them. So. I love that. Well, it's special. And I think the other thing we should touch on with this whole breaking boards, um, <laughs> because that – what you talked about today with that little boy that I feel, you know, that just the whole oh, somberness of that is, yeah, it's, it's very touching. But I think that, that, you know, the breaking barriers, which is the name of his book also. <laughs> Shout out right. to that. It's a great breaking book. Breaking barriers. Big drop us. here for you. But on <laughs> these break, on these boards, when you had the kids, and I know you do this often, the kids all write their barrier and he had us write the barrier too today also. Um, and then they get to break it, or you break it for the kids, I guess. The kids probably don't. Um, so, so yeah, let's dive into that deep for the moment. So, yeah. in three weeks, June 1st, um, again, I hold the world record for the most boards broken in a minute. Uh, it's 487 martial arts boards in a minute. And, um, it's insane. It is it's insane. insane. I just can't it's get past I mean, that. it hurt my hand a little bit today. I'm not going to lie on that one. Um, I, was, <laughs> I think I hit it on the wrong spot. Oh, I was imagining having to do that for 24 hours no. like you did. I was oh, like, hell yes, no. That's right. And that they're not the pre-broke, huh? Oh, no, they are not. See, yeah. I, when I the first time I took his class and I had to break it, my, my son's like, oh, my gosh, those are those pre-broke boards. I go, no, it is not. I legit yeah. broke the board. Oh, <laughs> so funny. Anyway, anyway, sorry. Continue, but, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, no worries. Uh, but it's so anytime, anytime I do something, I say, how can I take what I'm doing to the next level? You know, and as a business owner and as an opportunity, I think we should all be saying that to ourselves. Mm -hmm. How can I differentiate? How can I maximize my personal skill sets? And again, what lies within me to take what I want to do above and beyond what ever been done before? So it really became that I wanted these boards to be more than just something that were being broken. You know, I wanted to have a, I wanted to have a larger message. And in all of my years in, in the martial arts, when we're breaking, I mean, kids love breaking boards. Of course. I mean, you bring a bunch of boards out and kids are elated and they love it. Um, so there was always been that, that, that uh, partnership there with kids and boards. Um, but I also knew that there were a lot of kids out there that were looking to, you know, um, share who they were, you know, and we did that today. You know, we really reflected, really the board just becomes a medium. You know, it's like an artist that has a canvas. It just becomes the canvas, and we're looking for the messengers. And I realize there are thousands of children out there facing barriers on a daily basis. And that's when it came to me to say, let me take the canvas that you know, I hold in the realm of board breaking and apply it to kids that are in need of sharing that message. Yeah. And um, just to go a little bit more deeply, so yes, June 1, I'm back to breaking boards. 500 in a minute is what we're talking about. But the bigger picture is those high 500 boards have been at Child Help, which is a, a wonderful foundation, a national foundation to help abuse children. And we have had hundreds of these Child Help children 
share their personal barriers on the boards. And those are the ones that are going to be broken. Um, do you read all of them? I mean, do you read every single board? I can't explain the depth in which these boards impact people. Oh, I mean, it's like touching. It's just, uh, yeah. As Incredible. we step in and we share, the more individuals that look at the platform, because Every one of these children's messages is online and available. Um, it is set up as a personal fundraising page for any sort of individual that says, I want to sponsor this child's message. Wow. And I want to share why it's so important with child help is because, again, child health specifically works with children that have been abused. And these are children, and when you're, wor when these, when you're working with children that have been abused, they don't have the opportunity to step into the public and share their voice. It's silenced. It's silenced because of the, the level of the travesty of what's taking place. And that's why I am so connected with Child Hope because the boards that are going out are the only way these kids have a message that they can be shared. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with a lot of other charities, and you know, it's great to have that opportunity when I can hear from a child directly about what they're going through, whether it's cancer or sickness or whatever. Um, we are at the point now with Child Hope that we're there to really – a mission to giving them the voice that they don't have right now yeah. so and and the more that individuals learn about it they are blown away to be able to say i want to share that child's message and real quick story it's to incredible. go from there was you know a few weeks ago and and this is the way i try to parlay because it's such a new and unique event sometimes it's hard to understand how it impacts each other so a couple weeks ago i you know and we've all gone through this. I was at a restaurant, and there was a mom there, and she had three children there. I mean, she was busy. You know, two of them are usually going crazy, mm -hmm. and one's well-behaved, right? Of course. <laughs> you know, there's that one well-behaved child that's there. And, and, and I was sitting there. I was actually by myself that day. I was getting ready to go to a meeting. And this one child, he was there, and the other two were going crazy, and he's drawn away and drawn away. And um, next thing, and, and, and again, and as it, we all know, too. Sometimes you make an eye contact. He's two or three years old. You know, they're right back at you. You know, they're sort of looking at you like, I'm not going to cause trouble, but I'd like to say hello. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Do uh, you see me? I'm being good. Yes, <laughs> My brothers are exactly. terrible, but I'm good. Right. I'm Doesn't good. That, how many times have we had that happen to us where they, you know, you make that connection uh -huh. with a younger kid and, you know, he knows he's a little bit, of, he, it's almost like a sense of freedom because mom's busy with the two other kids. <laughs> I'm a little bit free. Hey, let's talk. You yeah. Know? Right. So a couple minutes later, he runs over and he gives me this piece of paper of something he had just drawn. And it was a picture of a zebra. I don't know what he was thinking, but I just, and he handed it to me, and I have it to this day. And oh he gosh. looked at me with the biggest smile, like, this is for you. Oh, I love what that. Will you It'll do warm with your it? heart real quick, huh? And I share that because it's exactly what's taking place with child health right now. We have 500 kids that have stepped up and said, I have a message for you, but I don't have a voice. Yeah. You know how freeing that is for them. Yeah. And so for $25, and I'll give you the website, um, we just an initial $25 registration so we can get the board into the hands of somebody. Um, and then all the tools are built into the site where they can share it with family and friends. You can put it on Facebook. You can shoot out an email. You get your own personalized QR code. It's your personal. You are committing to helping and giving a voice a, to a child. And we're giving you the tools to say, I now want to share it with the world. It's just so powerful. Um, and uh, so our goal, I mean, we have an ambitious goal, $250 for each board. Wow. Each message goes out. Amazing. So this was, again, it goes to our why. A few minutes ago, we talked about why. We talked about big, being bigger than we are. Um, $250 per board, that's $125,000 for child help. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. And it's like, if I could give them that, and we can as a team because our team grows and it's it's more than just me. Um, that's my why. And it's June gonna, one, and it's going to happen. Three thirty, downtown Knoxville. <laughs> There's no turning back. Yeah, I I can't turn around. I can't go hide. I can't let go. I have made a commitment to something, and just to parlay it back to business. Imagine the places we could go as business owners if we created this, cultivated this type of commitment and confidence in building, not only for selves, but for one another. Mm -hmm. It's great, the passion you know, piece of it. The passion component. Yeah. Let that, I love that. What is your passion component within your business? Right. Yeah. Do you know what it is? And if you can bring it into who you are and what you do, um, you won't have enough hours in the day. Yeah. 
I think that needs to be, we do vision boards every year. I oh think that needs God. to be our, every year, every, when we do our vision board, like we need to start it with what is our passion, Pete? Like what is, what our, is passion our passion component? Piece? Oh my goodness. I love that though because. It's a loaded that, question. Huh? It's a loaded it question. Because I think it probably varies over, you know, what your passion is with work, what your passion is with your marriage, your children. There's, there are probably layers to it. Yes. And, but if you can put that on there and you're like, this is what I'm doing this year. Yeah. I got to find my passion. Yeah. <laughs> or Which, I got to get it higher. And I was telling her too, you can see on, like literally right behind you, you can see it through the glass, but we do vision boards every year. Like since she and I partnered, like we've done a vision board at least once a year, sometimes yeah. twice a year. And the board that I left with today, I told Kara, I was like, this is kind of like a vision board. Like the stuff that I wrote on my board from our meeting today or the talk today, whatever you want to call it. I literally have it as a vision board. It's got like quotes on it. It's got all of like goals, things I want to do, people around me, all of it. So I'm going to keep it right there. Just like my other one. That's why she didn't break hers and she broke the blank one. She's like, I'm not <laughs> breaking okay. that. Yeah. I was That's like, this right. is my notes from right. today. <laughs> Hold on. Are you going to get it? Are you going to read us your notes from today? <laughs> But that's uh, how impactful it is. And it's funny, uh, you know, my vision board's right on my computer screen, you know, whether anybody realizes it or not. But when, it, when my presentation yeah. wasn't showing, my, my vision board was right there. You know, oh, it's yeah. just you need to have it in Mine's front of Mine's my screensaver. Yeah. You know, it's if you all, can you feel it, it, you know. Every day. So some of the things that I took from the talk I mean, today. Look how nicely <laughs> written it. on her board. I know. I'm telling you, I, it's a damn vision board. Okay. So some things that I took away. <laughs> I wrote passion. You said this. I don't know if you remember saying it. Passion plus consistency equals success. So I wrote that down. Love it. Oh. Yes. And then another thing that you said that I love, and you were really talking about like your charity side of everything, but it's a tell enough people and tell the right people about yeah, what you that want. That is so true. And you'll get anything that you ask for. I really liked that. Also, like performance is the opportunity to achieve. Mastery is the ability to surrender. I really liked that. And <laughs> some other things that you had talked about that were really good. Three things to moving your business forward after networking meetings. Because this is like the that's, whole... That's a big one. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. So he was talking about we always go to all these networking things and it's so great. You shake hands, you meet people, maybe have a drink. It's fantastic. But then you leave and it's like, oh, everything went in one ear and out the other. Absorb, like, assess, imp implement. Yeah, you remembered it. Girl. She I remember that. And it's right. It. And that's so I'm true. Listening. And I thought that was amazing. I think one of the biggest things you could say is if you can make that commitment to implement, implement. you've already shifted your business. Yes. You know, and you're so right. You know, and what, what you wrote down here, and I do share that, absorb, we absorb it. You know, we're going to go home tonight and remember, you know, what, what we heard that day. Yeah. And, but until we commit to that level of implementation, what's changed? Nothing. And most people don't. Nothing. That is what, that's where people fail. They don't do the follow-up. They don't. They just still, stay where they are. They just stay where they're, they're like, at. Why am I still here? Mm -hmm. What did you implement? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know you learned a lot of great stuff, or I know you look, you know, you, you absorbed a lot of great mm -hmm. information, but what did you yeah. do with it? Yeah. You know? That's big. Yeah. That's so true. I'm, I think it's game changing. It's game changing. <laughs> and you know what? Just to bring it back to real estate, yes. you know, you meet people every day. And if you don't follow up and say, hey, we spoke yesterday or whatever, mm -hmm. and here, I, you know, I know what Kara, you're that's so true. And I want to stick huge. on that for a moment because it's not just. And it's and, and and somebody says, okay, I'm going to start to implement. Well, guess what? It's not a call. It's not just a text. It's not just a. It's all of those and then some. Why? Yeah. It goes and it's not because nobody. It's not because they don't like you. It's because we're all too busy. Right. Yeah. So and and so so some people say, and here's a great thing, and we didn't even talk about this today. But how do I get over the hurdle of not implementing? Remind yourself that these people don't do not like you. They're just so busy. Yeah. You know, and that's so, yeah. and I'm sharing again from experience. So that's what gets me to say, all right, I need to reach out to that person at least three times. Mm -hmm. And because they didn't respond to my text and because they didn't email me back, um, it doesn't mean they don't want to talk to me. Right. Yeah. And I share that with any real estate agent. If yeah. you are, ju just make the commitment to implement consistently. Yeah. That's it. And to the same people. Yeah. And you'll get there actually told one of my friends that this morning and you you taught me that in like very beginning I mean we started off whenever I was like 
baby in the business, like literally brand new. Mm -hmm. And Kara told me, just do one thing for like, even if you're having a really hard day or whatever, you're having a tough mental day, whatever the case may be, because everybody goes through it. It's like, just do one thing for real estate a day, just one thing and you'll be successful. Like as long as you continuously do it, that's where so many people fail is they aren't consistent with it. And that's the most important Or they thing. forget, and then they're like, oh, now it's too late to reach out to that lead. Or yeah. So we're, we just put everything in our CRM, so it just reminds yeah. us. And then it's like, yes. hit everybody, you know, every couple of weeks, we are touching every single lead. Yeah. So, like, we just had an event, um, Main Street Festival, which was uh, 125,000 people came in. And we had a tent for two days. So we got a ton of people that put in my, uh, their little card for a drawing. And I split them all up, so every agent got those leads. So... The accountability part of me is, okay, I paid for the tent. Yes. Y'all need to follow up on the lead. So I'm on. I'm like, so did we click our calls? Did we make our calls? She's made, made our calls. calls. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> I made my calls. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I mean, but, you know, I can only lead a horse to the water, yeah. right? And at the end of the day, you're only as strong as your business is going to be. Mm-hmm. What the energy you put into it. And mm-hmm. so lead I get. with action over expectations. I like that. Write that lead one down too. Yeah. I didn't put that one down today. No, you don't Dang ever it. Down, but lead with action over expectations. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because if we lead with expectations, we will just cut ourselves short. Yeah. Yes. You know how many? Like you said, Kara. It's it's um, it's I the the that. agents that won't make the calls because they they start to put the expectations ahead of everything. And you're like, mm-hmm. this is. Yeah, they just yeah. put their name on a drawing. They don't really Actions want me to call. Expectations. Yeah, exactly. No, that's so. Yeah. That's so true. And follow up. Go ahead. No, that's all it is. <laughs> that's Sorry, it. You got to follow up. You're good. I was gonna say one other thing that I really liked that you um, said today and talked about that resonated with me and that I'll take into my own business as far as real estate goes is meet people where they're at. Right, like you had the whole yes. scale of one to ten. Meet people where they're at. Like, yes, you want people to buy a house from you. But not everybody you talk to is going to be there. So I, I'm literally going to take what you did and say, okay, where are you at with this process 1 to 10? 10 being ready to buy a house today. Mm-hmm. And meet them where they're at. Don't always be so pushy to, you know, make the sale right then and there. Because it's not going to happen. So, well, in maybe some cases. The good cases. But I've that. learned that as well because some I've taught, and we all do, as real estate agents, we all do. We talk with so many individuals. and. Mm-hmm whether you're a buyer or seller, they don't feel like they need to have a conversation with an agent until they want to pull the trigger. And I, and especially with buyers, I'm like, you may not be ready for another two years, Mm -hmm. but guess what? Start having those conversations with me now, because I really, my goal as an agent, as a professional is that I want to get you to an educational, educated point where you understand what you have available. Right. You know, if we start on day one, I mean, that does work, but, you know, we want to maximize the opportunity for you. And part of that comes through knowing, knowing right. a lot. And I am happy, and, and any successful agent is, that for the next two years, I will reach out to mm-hmm. you. It, you know, no, it doesn't need to be weekly, but let's, you know, if somebody told me that they, they're two years out, well, then let's talk every quarter. Yeah. Right. Let's touch base. You know, let me tell you what the market's looking like. Let me tell you what things are happening because that may justify pushing your time limit, time frame up a little bit or maybe yeah. pushing it back. Sure. Um, it's so for me, it's it's really getting clients to understand. Don't call me when you're ready, but let's talk now. And because I'm here and I can do the things that I can do, I understand how our our relationship in this process will work. And, yeah. it's, you know, it's not one that's. You know, it's not on the front burner. It may no. be on the back burner, but it doesn't mean we're not having those conversations. Sure. And that goes back to the 80-20 because the yeah. only 20% of the agents are going to wait around because the other, the ones that are here and are going to leave real, probably sooner than later, those are the ones that are like, oh, call me when you're ready. Yeah. And guess what? The person that's been following up for the last two years, that's the person they're going to call. Yeah. That's the person that they're going to have a relationship with because you, you're persistent. Yeah. And that, cha- that means you're going to be persistent when you're negotiating you're going to take care of their needs. You're going to follow through and, and close the deal. Mm-hmm. And they, yeah. pe- the buyers are not dumb. They see that. They, understand. they definitely understand. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's I like think it's adding value. It's 100% yeah. adding value. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Big picture thinking. It is. I don't care 100%. who we are. But it, and, and we're all customers, let's say that as well. Mm-hmm. We understand. We understand when we see value in front of us, not just yeah. from the product, but from the service. Yep. 
Period. Period. <laughs> Period. Period. <laughs> That's it, right there. I mean, we've shared so many. I know so many little things that people are gonna take out of this a little nugget. Well, <laughs> if they don't, then something's wrong with them. Yeah, and you're getting like a 30, 40 minute blurb of his. Uh, there is so amazing. much to oh. learn, and I mean, you have you share so much like wealth of knowledge on just stuff that we should know, but you've turned it into such like powerful messaging that like. It just res- resonates different than just saying, hey, go out and do big things. I the world's your right. oyster. Yeah. <laughs> go do your thing, you know? Well, or- because, like, and, and we didn't even talk about, we, t- we touched on barriers, mm-hmm. and we touched on, again, with my presentations about barrier thoughts. Um, I don't feel like enough of that gets acknowledged. You know, we're all facing barriers. We're all facing challenges. And if you were there today, then you heard, you know, the first one is I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't have the time to do this. I don't have the resources to do this. Right. I don't have the knowledge to do this. And when you're a big thinker, you come to the understanding that it's okay that you don't have them at the moment, but if you continue to sustain your level of thought and belief, those uncertainties will, they'll, they'll figure themselves out. And that yeah. was just the first one we talked about. Yeah. You know, it says real estate agents, how often do we think about that? How many people do you talk to that said, I want to become a real estate agent? I don't have, I didn't have time to take the test. I don't. Yeah. So yeah. again, if you haven't stepped into real estate, but you've thought about it, usually somebody will come to me and say, I thought about it. And then the next two words are, I don't. Yeah. I don't have, I don't the, money. have the money to take the course. Yeah. I don't have the time to study. Mm-hmm. I, do, I don't think I would even understand how to become an agent. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't. Yeah. So for all those agents out there, I want to say congratulations. You got through the first, I don't. Yeah. You stepped up, whether you didn't have the time, resources, or knowledge at the moment, you saw through that, you made it happen. Mm-hmm. And that's a big deal. And, you know, pat yourself on the back because you did it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, oh, my gosh, you were so great. <laughs> break that, break <laughs> like, the I don't know how else to put it. And I'm so thankful, too, like, just for this podcast and for you and people oh. like you because I am young, you know, and Kara's thankfully taken me under her wing. Yeah. But I've had the opportunity to meet so many people and you that – just like shed light on so many things that are important. And I just feel so grateful to be able to like hear it from you at such a young age and like, know, okay, this guy's doing like great things. Like I can do great things too. And it's just so nice to like, just be you. I love it. Do what you do. Learn so much. And embrace the true life that surrounds us. Not all the head clutter that gets thrown at us. And that's, that's where you'll, 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 you'll always remain within that balanced state of yeah. where can I go and what can I do? That's, I mean, if, I, if you're, you know, you're just asking me, what's one thing? Do you do what you do and embrace the truth of what life is that, that's around us? Yeah. Not the craziness. Yeah. And shut, the truth. shut this down a little bit and listen to this a little bit more. And it will always guide you in the right direction. I, I need to implement that. <laughs> <laughs> you just like write it on my forehead. Don't get lost in the sauce of life. Quiet the brain. Yes. Open the heart. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, quiet brain, open heart. Done. Easy enough. Oh. I know. Easy enough. Thank you, sweetie. Well, thank you, it's guys. I want to thank you for having day. me here to Nashville. Oh, oh my gosh. Thanks, thanks for coming. Office. You'll be and back, work-life right? work-life balance. Oh, I'm so excited. I love Nashville. Good. I love being yes. here. I love visiting I and, and creating and cultivating these friendships like we have. So. Yeah, that's right. Well, we love um, Knoxville, so. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> stop out that way, and if you're there June first, then you can. Yeah. You can see another world record event in Nashville. I'd love to make that, that happen. Cool. That would be very cool. It's a Saturday afternoon, so. Okay. We have a lot of exciting things going happen. on. There's a VIP party that night. You're welcome to it. We have people from around the country coming, so that's and around awesome. the world, we have people flying in from England. We have people flying in from all over the. That would be coast. awesome, and just to support your charity yeah. too. Incredible. And to to yeah. give these children the voices that they. Yeah. They can't share. They have a message, but they don't have a voice. And nobody should live like that. No, never. Well, thank you for giving a thank voice you guys. to those and babies. Thank you for the time and opportunity. Yeah. You're awesome. Thank you. you guys have got to follow him. You need to read his book. We're going to tag <laughs> all the information onto the podcast and our social media pages. So there's no way you're not going to see this, this man. Um, <laughs> and support him, follow him, do all the good stuff. And we truly do appreciate you. And and buy it's one of the kids' boards. Twenty five dollars makes right. a and, big and difference. Yeah, make sure I'll give you that so you can throw it in here. Would love all that. of it yes. is. Um, but uh, champalliance.org um, okay. is is the Champion Charity Alliance website, and uh, we'll make sure we get that out because yeah, our mission is to to give chil- children these voices. So. Right. And you're going to raise that money, no doubt in my mind. Let's get it I done. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you guys. Thank you so much. All right, All right. sweetie. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all, all the, the good, good stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, till next time. See ya.